Hello and welcome to this little tutorial series in which I will tell you how to build an Oculus Quest game using WebXR. Basically a small climbing game that we're going to implement um, with the Wonderland engine. Now, first, before you get started, you'll obviously want to install the Wonderland engine. And you do that by going to wonderlandengine.com, uh, going to the account page, and then signing up with this sign-up form. You will then be able to log in and from there be directed to the download page where you can download and install Wonderland Engine for either Windows, Mac or Linux. So after you start up the editor, you will be greeted by a new project dialog. In this dialog, you can set the name of the project and we are going to call this climbing game. And then you can just leave use default path active and create, which will then create a default project and we can just go ahead and launch this project by clicking on the green arrow at the top, which will then open the, for example, Chrome browser in this case, and already gives us the 3D scene in the browser. Now, the first thing that we'll want to do for our climbing game is we will want to import objects. So to get those 3D objects, we go to Sketchfab and just explore the models there. And I found in particular this little climbing wall that I'm going to go ahead and download uh, using the download link. And I'm going to choose the GLTF format because the GLTF format is the one best supported by Wonderland Engine. I also want to download this watch. This watch has a very excessive triangle count. 242,000 triangles is a little too much for the web. It would usually download too long, but through the power of Wonderland Engine, we can just uh, scale that down a bit for us. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. So I'm again gonna click on download 3D model and download this GLTF model. Later on, we're gonna go into also installing a custom font in Wonderland Engine, but we're gonna go ahead and download that later. So once we downloaded those zip files, we can go ahead and create folders for these objects. We notice really quickly that both zip files have exactly identically named files. We could rename those, but because the GLTF file contains a reference to the bin file, we're gonna skip this and instead uh, go ahead and create two folders, one for the wall and a second folder for the watch. We can then open the watch folder, go ahead to find our smartwatch uh, GLTF files, and we just drag and drop them in to the asset browser. Next, we do the same thing for the wall. We open the wall folder in the asset browser, go to the climbing wall zip file, and then we drag and drop the files into the asset browser as before. From here, we want to drag them into our scene because then it will be displayed with the other 3D objects. So I go ahead, I select the scene GLTF file and I drag and drop that into the scene view where after very short, it will appear. Now we're gonna go ahead and just delete uh, these objects that we do not need. I select them by left mouse click and hit delete to delete the object. If I hold down the right mouse button, I can look around the scene. And while looking around the scene, I can use the W, A, S, and D keys to move around and get a better perspective and see both objects. What I want to do next is I want to select both and delete them at the same time. So I go ahead and select one object with the left mouse button. Then I hold shift and I select the other to select them both. Now I can hit delete to delete both. Because Wonderland Engine is in very early development, you will want to save often to avoid crashes uh, making you lose work. So I go ahead and hit control S and it saved the project for me. Next, we will want to scale up this ground plane to basically infinite size. And we're gonna go ahead and just move this to 60, 60, 60, scale this up to a very high amount. And 
we will notice that we still see a seam where the background transitions to this plane basically and we want to avoid that so we're going to change the background color to make that look a little better. To change the background color you go to views project settings and open the rendering options here. You can change the clear color to whatever you want but we're going to go ahead select the plane open up the mesh component here and see the exact color of this plane. To make it a little a lighter, we're gonna just type in 194 tab, 194 tab again, 194, and we get a very high friendly gray. We can choose exactly the same color and um, for the clear color here, again, switching with tab for a little more efficiency. And we will then notice that if we click away from the plane, there's no longer a seam where the ground plane transitions to the background. Now, while we were speaking and making those adjustments, the textures were compressing in the background. This is great because it means that all the images here are gonna be smaller and therefore require less time to download. But not only are they gonna be smaller to download, but also going to be smaller on the GPU on the Quest later on. While we're waiting for this process to complete, we're going to go ahead and add the watch model. We open the folder for the watch and we drag and drop the scene GLTF file for the watch in our scene view. Now we see, oh my God, this watch is enormous. That is because there's no real standard to which units 3D artists need to model. For us in virtual reality, we want one unit to be exactly one meter, otherwise it will look off. And the climbing wall seems to have the right units, but this watch in this case does not. Wonderland Engine gives you tools to manage this well. To fix the size of this watch, we want to go to views, resources to see all resources listed in the project. We do not have any animations, so this table is empty, but under meshes, we will find all sorts of objects listed. And that is, for example, the grips for the climbing wall, or in this case, the polysurface 30 uh, weird names here that we have for the watch. Um, these names were set either through the exporter of the 3D animation, uh, 3D modeling tool, or set by the artist themselves. In this case, though, we're just going to leave the names as they are. By double clicking, you could rename them, but we're just going to skip this step and instead going to go directly to the import scaling. We see that this is about a hundred times bigger than it's supposed to be. And that is very common because some software just for 3D modeling uses a hundred times scale where one unit is one centimeter instead of one meter. So we go ahead and we just apply dot one here. So I have 1% of the size and we just copy and paste this value for every one of these meshes. Going back to the scene view, we can now select our watch, and that is the second root node that we have here. And we can move it to the side and move it upwards using the translation gizmo. If you do not have the translation gizmo, but instead the rotation gizmo or the scaling gizmo, you can select the gizmo at the top left in the scene view, where the toolbar shows the translation, rotation, and scaling gizmo, or hit the appropriate hotkeys, which are G for grab, and that is the translation gizmo, R for rotate, or S for scaling. In this case, we want G for grab, and we move around this little watch. And going closer, we can see it looks like it has the appropriate scale. Now, when you remember this model on the Sketchfab website, you probably realize that there's numbers missing here. And we're gonna fix this because Wonderland Engine currently does not display transparent materials and there's glass in front of the face of the watch here. So we can select the face of the watch using the left mouse button 
and we can hit delete to then all of a sudden see the face of the watch with the time on it. If we now select this face of the watch, we can go one step further and illuminate the display. We do that by clicking on the mesh component here. And we already see it has this texture applied, but we want this texture applied not to a Fong texture, which gets affected by light, but something that is so-called a flat shader. And in this case, we choose the flat textured shader. Now it just disappeared and that was obviously not the goal. We want to just set the alpha mask threshold to zero here to ensure that it does not uh, use the alpha channel. We have the watch as we imagined it. Now I was mentioning that this watch has an excessive amount of detail and an excessive vertex count applied to it. And we can change this with Wonderland Engine very easily by just going to the resources tab where we were before to change the import scaling and then changing the uh, so-called auto simplify factor. So what we will do here, we just enable auto simplify for every one of these. And then we can change the factor, either leave it at half or go even lower to dot one, which will give us about 10% of the vertices we had in the original mesh. Going back to the scene view and selecting the face of the watch, we now see that the structure of the mesh is very simplified. And this is great because that means it will download and render really fast in our final application. Hitting the green arrow button again, or just the package icon to make sure that the browser gets updated, the browser opens and now displays our updated scene, including the little watch we have here. Again, here in the browser, we can navigate around by holding the left mouse button and then moving around with W, A, S, and D.